Hi, everybody. Welcome to this month's International Crafters Video Hop. So this month, um, we're a group of demonstrators around the world. And this month, we have a theme of love or anniversary, kind of perfect theme for Valentine's Day in February. Um, so today, I want to show you how to make a card using the Lifetime of Love Bundle. Uh, it's part of the Forever Love Suite lots of words there forever love suite from the the uh, january to april mini catalog it's one i haven't played with before um i bought it it's so pretty and it's perfect for weddings anniversaries um weddings anniversaries yeah showers that kind of thing but the the images on it you can use for any um any card or any kind of card just switch up the sentiments all right so let me switch over and I will show you um, some of the products from the suite and then we'll make the card. So this is, it's called Lifetime of Love. This is the bundle. So it's really pretty. Like I said, the, the sentiments are perfect for, you know, Valentine's Day, wedding anniversaries, but look at these images. They can be used on any kind of card. And then of course the bundle has some, the dies that will cut out the images as well as these great, look, look, look this one, it's perfect for a wreath. Um, this one that I'm going to use on this card um, is a frame with flowers around it. Again, you can use these on any kind of card. Um, it doesn't have to be tied, even though the sentiments are, are obviously kind of anniversary wedding. And then now I haven't got all of the designer series paper, but this is a piece of the designer series paper. So the colors are pretty peacock. It's specialty paper with the gold. And the other side to this one is moody mauve and uh, very vanilla. And then there are all sorts of other um, pieces in this. Now I went ahead and cut this out and then I have embossed it with the layered or layering. I think it's layered florals embossing folder, which is also in the mini catalog. Okay. And then in the suite, there is this gorgeous, uh, pretty peacock and gold ribbon and these petal pink and pretty peacock um, gold foiled um, embellishments. So those are some of the things that come in the the sweet. So let's pull out some of my supplies. Now I've got a piece of pretty peacock cardstock. Now I've cut this, I'm going to talk in, in imp uh, imperial measurements, um, but um, the metric measurements conversions will be done uh, underneath this video. So this is four and a quarter by 11. Um, basically half of a piece of cardstock cut lengthways, and then I'm going to score it in half. So in Imperial, that's five and a half. So if you were doing this in metric, it would be uh, 10.5 by 29.7 centimeters scored in half. Again, I forget to give you those metric measurements as I go through. Check underneath the video and they will be there. So I'm going to take my bone folder. And as always, you fold into the mountain or the raised line. So this is the side I scored on, it's a score line. This is the raised line. So fold into that raised line and use your bone folder to give it a good burnish. So that's our card base in Pretty Peacock. And then I cut this piece of the designer series paper, um, four inches by, by five and a quarter, um, or 10 centimeters by 14.4 centimeters. And then I embossed it using, again, this um, layered florals 3D embossing folder. Now, depending on which side, this is the, that other side, um, make sure that whatever side you want to be the front of your card and facing up, you put facing towards the front of the embossing folder. So the front is the one with the logo. If I had put this other side, then those would have been the embossed side, the raised side, and it, this the side I actually want would be debossed, which may have looked all right, but I really wanted these, um, these flowers to be raised up. Now I've got a, this is an old, um, an old sanding block that I've had, um, and I'm just gonna take and just kind of distress this a little bit. It already had started, to um, kind of, you could start to see the white um, of the in the kind of the inner core of this designer series paper is white, and you could already start to see that from just the embossing. So I'm very gently taking 
this sanding. You can use sandpaper. It doesn't have to be anything special. This is just one I happen to have. It's Kaiser Craft on it. But you could just use a piece of sandpaper from, from, your, uh, from your workshop or your husband's workshop. In this case, I'd have to go and rob it from my husband's who had found this. So I'm just taking um, and kind of distressing it a little bit to bring out the, the white from the inside of the card. So that's going to go on like that. Now, I went and cut this out of Pretty Peacock, so you can kind of see. I have used a piece of, this is the adhesive um, sheets that you can stamp on up cells. They're this wide, they're longer. Um, they come with little kind of seams across them so you can pull them off and the side the stickiness is underneath this side it's not on the solid side so you can just pull off these and stick that to a piece of in this case I stuck it to a piece of pretty peacock um, cardstock and then I put my die on it so this is just going to make it really easy to adhere my frame um, onto my card base now I typically run uh, run it a through the die cutting machine, the stamp and cut and emboss machine, um, a couple of times, maybe three times, and that just helps the whole whole piece we cut through all of the pieces of my like all the little bits, especially if you've got one that's this um, detailed, so that I can then take these and I'm gonna try and just peel this off gently, so I can hopefully pull this off. Um, and leave maybe all of these bits that I don't want. Let's see if this works. And then maybe I only will have a few, a few bits to pull off. So I'm going to gently, it's quite, it's quite delicate. So just be careful when you pull it off so that you don't tear it. But this will leave the stickiness. So I'm going to, I'm bringing the stickiness along with me. And hopefully I'm leaving most of my bits behind and the ones that I don't leave behind hopefully are easy enough to poke out. So I just wanted to show you that I otherwise I would have um, I would have done this ahead of time. So I'm just gonna try and get all the bits out like that. Once you got the stickiness on it, it does kind of help. Okay, and then you lift it up. So where it has, because there are different, there's kind of seams across, and it's it's about um, maybe two inches wide each of these pieces. So it makes it easy to pull off like that, like that. And I think, oh no, there's one little piece there that I can. So you just kind of have to look and see if you've left any of your, your bits behind. Hopefully I haven't, I've got them all. There we go. And then that can all go. And then I want to put, isn't this pretty? So to hopefully get that straight. I'm going to use my lines on my designer series paper to try and just make sure I've got it straight. And because I've got that adhesive sheet on the back, this is so easy to just adhere um, to my piece of designer series paper. If I didn't have this, um, those adhesive sheets on the back, um, I'd be having to try and use my liquid glue. And I didn't do a very good job of getting that straight. So hopefully I can just lift it. I was so worried about using those lines, but I wasn't really looking to see that I got it kind of even side to side. Let's see, that might be a little bit better. Let's just gently put that. That's a little better. It doesn't really matter if it's not perfectly straight, but it's such a pretty frame that you could use on any card. Okay, so what else have I got? I also, I went ahead and used some of the dies to um, cut out some leaves and things in Moody Mauve. I'll see if I use those, but I do want to stamp a sentiment. Um, and I think I'm going to stamp this one that says, wishing you 
a lifetime of love and happiness. I think this is the one I want to go right in the middle. So we'll get a block. Oopsie. Maybe put it on a little straighter. And I'm going to use Pretty Peacock to stamp. I'm using very vanilla because I think the um, designer series paper actually has very vanilla. And I'm just going to stamp this. If you follow me, you know that I like to fussy cut. Ooh, my pretty peacock is looking like it needs to be re-inked. That's a little better. I'll leave that out so that I remember um, to re-ink my ink pad. All right, so I'm just going to take, if you don't like to fussy cut, then use a punch or a die um to to stamp and and then cut out your your sentiment but i'm just going to take and just kind of i just kind of steer with the hand um that's got the paper and i don't really worry if i haven't got the same kind of amount of of uh white space or in this case very vanilla space around the letters i'm just kind of going around and leaving a little bit of space go around that eye with a dot and like this again if this isn't your thing use a punch or a die or just cut a rectangle or a square whatever this whatever your shape of your sentiment needs um, to to stamp your sentiment on okay so we're going to put that on like that and then I did cut these out. I'm not sure I'm going to use those. What I am going to do before I put things on, this is this ribbon. I love to deconstruct ribbon. So I'm going to cut about nine inches of ribbon. Ooh, my scissors are got glue on them. They need to be cleaned. Um, so I'm going to just take and cut. I'm going to cut my ribbon. So I've got about nine, 10 inches of ribbon and I'm cutting it in half because I just like the, the look of a, what I call a deconstructed ribbon. This phrase, um, which I also like the look of, but if you don't like frayed ribbon and doing this, then just use the ribbon. And then I'm going to put these pieces together and I'm going to tie a bow with the, the two pieces put together. Like that, get my bows, there we go. And, and you can make it as big or small as you want. And you can pull these, these bow part, the bow part out. I got it twisted, but that's okay. You can pull the bow part out and separate it. I've got one that's quite a bit bigger than the other. So let's just try and make it small. And you can see that it's, it's, um, it is fraying, which I also like the look of. Like that. And then you can, once you get it to look like you want it to look, I got one, two that are just a little bigger. Okay, there we go. And then you can trim it. Hopefully these will work. Two. So that the tails are the same a little longer there we go and then this can go wherever you want it i'm going to put it right uh there and i like to use glue dots on my ribbon so just take your take your roll of glue dots stick your your bow on a glue dot and then use your take your pick tool to pull it off and then you can fuss with your bow you can see the threads, maybe you can't, but the threads, it's definitely fraying. So again, if that's not your thing, then just use the ribbon as it is. It's gorgeous ribbon. I love to play with it. Okay. So I'm gonna put that in the middle. And I still may use some of those Moody Mauve um, embellishments or the die cut pieces that I, I cut. But if I do, I'm gonna stick them underneath this this um, sentiment. My sentiment's going to go just in the middle of that frame like that. 
Come on. All right. So do we use some of these? Maybe. Glue dots. Glue dots are my friend. So if you don't use glue dots, check them out because they are the most amazing little pieces, little, uh, little uh, adhesive dots. So you can use them for all sorts of things. If your corners or when if I glue this on and my corner sticks up, um, use a glue dot to hold that corner in place. That's a way so that if you use liquid glue, um, like I do, and I always try not to get too close to my edge. Um, otherwise, you get the glue kind of splodging out. Um, then use a glue dot to um, put underneath that corner. So I'm just going to take and put some of these just to give it a little bit of dimension. Do. If I had thought about it, gold would have been really pretty for some of these die cuts, but I didn't think about that until now, so we'll use the Moody Mauve. And if you cut, I always tend to cut more die cuts out than, than I actually use, and so I will just put these two leaves into my stamp case um, for the next time, and then I can um, use them. I've got them. Okay, so... So I'm gonna, I always use liquid glue when I've got an embossed piece because it gets into the nooks and crannies. So like that. Pull those twine out. Okay, so I won't use those, I'll save them. And then the last thing for the, the card is some of these gorgeous embellishments. So I'm gonna use the Pretty Peacock embellishments. And so I'll put one two so that's uh one of the big and two uh, one of the big one of the little and then i'll put one of the big ones there okay so the last thing i need is i've got a piece of very vanilla again so this is um four inches by five and a quarter or um 10 centimeters by 14.4 centimeters and i'm going to use Moody Mauve on the inside of the card. Let's see if I can, okay. I always tend to stamp in the bottom right corner of my inside of my card. If you want to put a sentiment in there, you could absolutely do that. I tend to just put an image and then I'll write a note. So we'll adhere this to the inside of my card. I love this color combination of Pretty Peacock and Moody Mauve. Um, I know not everybody loves Moody Mauve, but I think it's a really gorgeous color. And I think it's a gorgeous color with the Pretty Peacock. Um, so there we go. So there is my card for this month's video hop um, with a theme of love or anniversary. So this one's definitely a love card. Um, and again, it uses the the lifetime of love um, bundle which is part of the forever love suite from the the january to april mini catalog all right everybody thanks for joining me today uh, please leave comments i'd love to see if you love my card or what your suggestions might have been um, for making it differently also don't forget to hop along with us um, by checking out all of the links um, to the other videos in this hop we all love to get comments so just make sure that you either give us a like or you comment on our videos. Uh, and let's see, what else was I going to tell you? Oh yes, check the underneath for all of the measurements, whether you're uh, imperial or metric, the measurements for my card um, will be underneath this video. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us today. And I hope you enjoyed the hop and will join us again next month. Bye everybody, happy stamping.